Hi, everybody, from the Husker Hawkeye Midwest Security Lamination Studio. I'm Travis Justice, Dr. Rob Zadisco, back with me again today. I want to thank all the people who have linked up through HuskerMax.com, a good friend of HuskerHawkeye.com. And, Rob, when you look at this week's game, this is the one that everybody's been pointing to. This, <laughs> it, we, we've gone through a, a non conference uh, schedule that's been fairly easy for Nebraska. Now it gets tough. Not only are you playing on the road, but you're playing a team like Wisconsin. Well, in my mind, this is this is this season's Texas game. What Texas was last year to Nebraska fans and the team itself, I think that's what Wisconsin is. It's the first real big test. It's the introduction of the Big Ten. It's They're a very, very good team, and I think they've really got a lot of people worried. Well, you know, there's going to be a lot of Husker fans that make the – uh, the, the trip to Madtown, just to be part of the Madison experience. Oh, they are. a lot of them going to be sitting outside outside the stadium, going to be sitting over in the arena watching it on closed circuit TV. Going to have a great great showing of Husker fans. Not sure how big a difference that's going to make in the end, though. Well, you know, I, we can say that. In, in, in Wisconsin's a very good team. Uh, it ranks seventh in the country. But has the Wisconsin Badgers, have they been tested seriously this year? They they really haven't been. Now, I, there, there's little bits and parts of me that look at them, and I think, you know what, they've got a solid defense, but maybe not a great defense. You could make the argument they've been a little bit weak against the run, even with the opponents that they've been playing. UNLV actually moved the ball on the ground reasonably well against them. At the same time, though, Wisconsin has done... To, to less than stellar teams what a great team should do to less than stellar teams. They have been absolutely dominating and that's what worries me. Now you can make the argument, you look at Wisconsin, you look at Nebraska, Nebraska maybe has a little bit of a stronger overall defense even with some of the weaknesses we've mm -hmm. seen on Nebraska's defense thus far. The thing that still gets me is when you look at how efficient, how error free, how turnover free Wisconsin's dominating offense has been, that's what worries me. They, they have just absolutely dominated the teams that they've played. Yeah, let's talk about that Wisconsin offense first. And that it, Brett Bielema got a gift when Russell Wilson decided to transfer from North Carolina State well, and become a, a bad and, and I And I've made the, I've made the argument in, in the online blog on HuskersHawkeyes.com that this, in my mind, this literally could be a fireable offense for Tom O'Brien at North Carolina State to let this kid go. I mean, he, he has played very, very well. He has been very error-free. You take a guy who, you know, you can always make the argument that he's only been at Wisconsin for, a well, playing games for a month. He's been there since this, since this past, early, early summer, summer, late spring, early summer. I know he was playing baseball before then, but you got a guy that on the whole within the realm of his overall college football career the guy's been a four-year starter and he's been quite frankly a pretty solid one at that and you could say he's right now in a lot of people's Heisman Trophy list so you combine Russell Wilson with two quality running backs very good running backs and ball, an ball is, yeah, ball that would is, make you jealous it, it is balls a man and a half running the ball back there uh, you look at the offensive line and the thing that really gets me about that offensive line they, they play very well together. You, you don't look at them and pick out individuals. When you watch them play, all you see is a unit working in unison, and that tends to spell trouble for opponents. At the same time, you, you even look at their backups. I watched the end of a couple of some of those earlier games this year, uh, the Oregon State game, the UNLV game. I paid attention well into the late portions of that game, late fourth quarter, when you saw the second string offensive line in there. The second string offensive line looks good. They've got a couple of guys dinged up, a couple of injuries. They're going to be potentially starting a redshirt freshman on that offensive line. I don't think they're going to miss a beat doing that. It's going to be interesting. Let's let's talk about the Wisconsin defense now because you mentioned they've given up some yards, especially to UNLV. That's the one a lot of us got to watch, um, and that happened when UNLV got to the outside. It and, did, and, and that would hurt. That's exactly what hurt Wisconsin in the bowl game last year. Uh, teams were able to get to the outside, and they didn't have the speed to catch them, and then that opened it up in the middle. Nebraska's offense has been very opportunistic this year. They and have it, been. It, this, this is another opportunity for Taylor Martinez. It, it is. And, you know, there were some games last year that, in my mind, were very surprising in terms of what Nebraska's offense was able to do. The Kansas State game, the Missouri game, where all of a sudden you saw Nebraska's offense, especially Martinez, Halu against Missouri, 
some big holes, really gashing some of these teams for some really big plays. I think the opportunity could be there for Nebraska to do that again. Now, the problem is, is again, the best defense for Nebraska's offense is just keeping them off the field. And I think that's going to be Wisconsin's game plan is to try and do a ball control offense for their defense. I do think their defense has some weaknesses. They're not the fastest guys up front. They're actually, they're not the biggest or strongest guys up front either. I think Bielema's got a group of guys that, you know what, it's the best he's got. He's got them out on the field. They're a little bit stronger. You look at Borland at linebacker. You've got some experienced guys there. You can get to the outside on them. You've already mentioned that. That's going to open up some holes in the middle. We've already talked about that. The fact remains that if this game turns into a shootout, though, I don't think Nebraska's offense is going to be able to keep up with Wisconsin's. Well, let's look at it this way. It's going to be a crazy atmosphere, that's for sure. Um, you've been in big games like this. I've, I, I, have, I have played football in Camp Randall Stadium. It is not an easy place to play well, a game. Let me ask you this. How, you know, the, the Huskers have heard it, the, that the, the, the Wisconsin's gone from a two-point favorite up to a nine-and-a-half-point favorite, the, the, the surroundings of Camp Randall. How do you block that out of your mind heading in, in, in a game week? Or, can, or is it impossible? You know, it, to an extent, it's impossible. That's why home field adv- advantage exists. And, you know, Nebraska's played in big games. The thing that Nebraska, here's the thing, what's going to be key for Nebraska in this game is to not fall into the trap that happened with them against Texas last year. You put all your eggs in one basket. You get so incredibly psyched up to play this one game that everybody's been talking about for the last three, four, five, six months, whatever, and you're going to get out there and literally, if one little thing goes wrong, psychologically, the whole house crumbles. And that's what happened against Texas last year, in my opinion. And Nebraska was by far and away a better team on the whole than what Texas had last year. Texas came into Memorial Stadium, knocked off Nebraska, and just really made Nebraska look bad. But the bigger thing was Nebraska made themselves look bad. They got a. They just cannot fall into that same trap again. If Nebraska goes into this game thinking that their entire season, their entire introduction into the Big Ten, lies solely in how they perform in this one game against Wisconsin, you're going to see a lot of issues. This is too young of a team. You've only got a, a sophomore at quarterback. Three or your four running backs are all freshmen. You've got a young offensive line that's starting a true freshman. You've got several freshmen and sophomores all across the board on defense. Nebraska is not a psychologically tough enough team that they're going to be able to put all their eggs in one basket, get so psyched up for a, a single game like this like they did with Texas last year. If they, if they look at this game as making or breaking their season, they're going to go up to Wisconsin and stumble very badly. On that same note, is this the big, and I wrote this earlier in the week, is this the biggest game, I think it is, for a Nebraska football team since the 2001 National Championship game? No. Really, what game was bigger? Well, you mean, well. Because I look at, you know, I look at the, the USC games uh, the out there and back in Lincoln, but Nebraska still hadn't arrived yet. You look at the Texas yeah. game last year, Nebraska won the North, but he clearly wasn't the best team two years ago in the Big 12, even though they played them close, Texas and Oklahoma. This, we got a top 10 ranked Nebraska team now against a top 10 Wisconsin team, and that's why I say it's the biggest game since 2001. In, in my opinion, the bigger games were those two losses in the Big 12 title games. Because what it showed is that Nebraska could play okay. with top five national level talent. They could hang with Texas. They could hang with Oklahoma. Those were turning point games. This is a game, as big as it is, Nebraska could still win their division. They could still go to the Big Ten title game. They could end up facing Wisconsin again. And I think the advantage always goes to the team. You know what, Wisconsin beats Nebraska. I think Nebraska has a little bit of an edge going into the going into the Big Ten title game, assuming they win the division. You look at Washington last year, blown out in the season, came back, beat Nebraska handily in the bowl game. And you look at the Washington-Nebraska game this year. I think Nebraska was a better team than, than Washington in all three of those games. Didn't mean Washington wasn't able to sneak one in on them. I think as big a game as this is, I don't think it's the biggest game. 
I think you look at an Ohio State, I think you look at a Michigan State, I want to see Nebraska play a game like this, and then I want to see them turn around and have, win or lose, I want to see them rebound and continue to play well for the rest of the season. I'm, I'm not an a, all your eggs in one basket kind of guy, unless it is a championship game, a conference title game, a national title game. It's early in the season. I don't think this is a make or break game. It's huge if Nebraska wins, but it's not that big a deal if they lose because you've still got the whole season in front of you. I don't think anybody expected Nebraska to, to go undefeated this year. If you're going to lose a game, lose on the road to a very good Wisconsin team. Of course, uh, Saturday is the start of a very brutal Big Ten schedule for Nebraska. He's Dr. Rob Zaska. I'm Travis Justice from the Midwest Security Laminations Husker Hawkeye Studio. Enjoy the game.